Welcome back, guys. Uh, week 13. Lionel is, well, you'll see, he's not he's not as bad as he was, COVID-related. Uh, and we are going to cover Warhammer releases, 40k releases, I think some other releases. Well, definitely some other releases, but I forgot the names. Um, so let us enjoy the intro and get back to the intro. Mini Matters, a miniature painting podcast. Here we are, Lionel. Welcome, hey, welcome. Jim. I'm not bad, yeah. Yeah, I've been better. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I've come back after a couple of weeks off. We were meant to record last week, but I've managed to pick up COVID for the uh, the second time. First time was in <clears throat> March last year, um, and then I felt quite bad on Wednesday uh, a week ago. Um, took the lateral flow test, found out I was positive. Um, and soon, pretty after, everybody in the house went down with it, including my mum, who visited for the first time in a year and a half, and we managed <laughs> to give her COVID. And the only person who is completely immune has shown, has, has passed every test every day, is my wife, Neat, who is a pharmacist. So I'm starting to think she's keeping the good stuff for herself. Um, <laughs> yeah. and she's left us all to her own devices. <laughs> because I don't understand how she's been around all of us. Um, and not picked out. I mean, I'm obviously I'm happy that she hasn't, but it sure. makes no sense whatsoever. So obviously I've I got three I'm... daughters. Yeah, I've got yeah, three go. daughters. The two eldest um, tested positive. They had a very mild cough. So what's made this quite a, a difficult one is obviously when I caught it the first time, it was just myself that managed to catch it for some reason from the gym. Um, I'd gone to a spin class, got onto a very sweaty bike. And that's where I think I got it from. This time, um, my uh, middle daughter was sent home because it was a positive case in her class. And obviously she was a carrier and she spread it throughout the house like wildfire. However, my two eldest daughters, thankfully, although they had it, only displayed really slight symptoms of cough. So I've had them at home for 11 days, but their, their energy levels have been just the same. So that's been horrendous because obviously I've been on death's door um and they've they've still had no dip in energy and then Beautiful, the two-year-old my youngest has reacted badly to it and has become very very clingy so it's a worse scenario when you're meant to be trying to get bed rest and you've got two who are full of energy and bored because they're at home for 11 days and then a the youngest who's really clingy um and my mom was here and she was ill and my <laughs> wife took three days off to look after us for a bit and then after that she thought now forget this i'm uh Bored, isn't it? Bored of just looking after ill people, probably. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not been good. I've, uh, I'm pretty much close to being well enough now to carry on with normal life in the sense that I'm past day 11 now in terms of isolation. I'm still probably about 20% uh, below what my energy level should be. And I'm still getting fever every so often getting cold sweats and whatnot uh but i'm at the point now where i just want to get on and do stuff because i think i'm one of those people i think if you sit in bed for too long i generally don't sit in bed when i'm ill i generally my first port of call is to go to the gym and sweat it out but obviously you can't with covid you've got to isolate uh but you're I'm sweating those, now i can see yeah now you can see it now can't you it's coming through <laughs> it's now. just popped up yeah yeah go away uh, cleaned yeah so there was there was a prime example of it i'm sitting in my study it's <laughs> What's the time now? It's uh, 20 to midnight here in the UK. I've got both windows open. So there's <laughs> cold air coming through, as well as moths and all the creatures of the night. And still I've managed to Commitment. get a sweat on somehow. So <laughs> that's that's the level of what this this is. Like I said, the first time I had it, it, w it was bad. It took me off my feet for about two, two three days. Uh, but this is before we knew how bad it was. Um, this time, it's been worse. It's taken me off my feet for about four days which is weird because, like I was saying to Jamie, it's not that camera, bad. Huh? Four days, like, I swear you hear stories, it's like, two, I suppose it's the art, it's the road to 100% rather than just not being able to move, isn't it? Because in, in bed for four days is what you're saying, then essentially, you're like. Yeah, I, well, I wasn't in bed because mm. I don't like to stay in bed, but I was weak. I couldn't carry my own body weight for about three, four days. And like I said, I generally, I generally, because I, I keep active, I keep fit, I work out five times a week. Um, I generally don't get ill. So something that can take me off my feet for four days is a big virus as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, except that your wife doesn't have it, which does make me wonder, Lionel. Well. <laughs> yeah. I, is I, it, I, I reckon... I, 
<laughs> I think there's I think there's a fourth vaccine out there that obviously they're all sharing. Well. <laughs> Makes Super no vaccine. sense. She's been, she's been up amongst the kids. Everything. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm really happy for her. But that that kind of I think I've talked about our luck before, haven't we? Where she's got the best luck in the world, mm-hmm. and I've got the worst world luck in the world. And between us as a household, our luck is average. But that's only because <laughs> this is a prime example. Prime example. I've had the bloody thing twice. I've actually suffered worse the second time, which makes no sense because I should have antibodies. I've had one vaccine in me. It makes no sense. If anything, I should have recovered quicker or it shouldn't have been as bad. But this time was <laughs> this time was worse. And then my wife's obviously had she's had two vaccines because obviously she's on the front line. So she's been fully vaccinated and it's not not touched her sides. Nothing. I wonder if she um, she actually had the vaccine, uh, not the vaccine, had the covid but had no symptoms no she uh, tested um, she tested every day because uh, <laughs> the other thing as well is yeah the other thing as well is <clears throat> sorry she has to go to work because obviously she she's vaccinating people and she has to have a clear flow test obviously if she's even if she is not yeah, showing any symptoms and she fails a flow test she can't be anywhere near these people um yeah. so she took three days off anyway just to help us out because my mum and my mum and me were just couldn't even carry her own body weight let alone look after three kids um oh yeah but she's passed every every flow test which to me doesn't make sense at all but it is what it covid is, baby it? isn't it and you did some painting did you i tried i tried no i didn't i didn't paint at all i didn't I, it's, it's one of those th- it's one of those awful illnesses where you can't even lie on the sofa and watch tv because you can't concentrate i was i mean i was I was having phantom smell, so I I smelt for heaters for five days continuous to the point <laughs> where I went downstairs and I said to my mum, "Can you close the door, please, when you're cooking?" And there was nobody in the kitchen, but I could smell people <laughs> cooking for heaters in my kitchen for four days solid, and it just didn't go anywhere. Um, I was tripping. I was seeing people standing in the corner of the room that weren't there, and then I'll turn that's, around and that's annoying. There. <laughs> yeah, no. So I was having having big fevered kind of visions and stuff. It was it it was really bad. So it was not the kind of illness that you can sit on your sofa and you think, you know what, I'll catch up with that box set or I'll um <laughs> I uh, I'll watch it. And in fact they 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 put Akira on Netflix and I thought, oh I might watch Akira. I thought actually that's a bit trippy at the best of times. I'm not gonna <laughs> watch it now. So yeah, I've done absolutely nothing, Jamie, other than just exist and survive and live. And there were a couple of days where I thought, you know what? Living's over age, just take just take me now. Because the other <laughs> pro- the other problem I had with it as well this time is the first time round, it kind of built to a crescendo and you thought, this is it. Once this fever breaks, I'm on the mend. This time it built and it broke, and I thought that's it now. I'm I'm on my way to recovery. Then it came down, then it built again. There was a, there was a point where I hit the peak three times, and that that, that that third time I thought. I'm not getting over this. This isn't, I mean, I never felt I was in, in real danger. I never felt I was going to be hospitalized mm. or my mm-hmm. life was uh, at risk. Like some unfortunate souls have been, but there was a point where I thought I can't shake this bloody thing. It's just not going anywhere. And then my wife's like sauntering around, like it hasn't touched. I thought, am I, am I, <laughs> am I like an evolutionary weakness for the human race? Is it better off that? I just Let's kill off? you off. Yeah. It was a real, well, it was the, a real place the problem find, Jamie. Well, <laughs> I mean, it is a big deal, COVID, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But even if you did die now, the damage is done with your gene pool because you've already got three kids. So, you know, you don't really get any advantage of dying now in terms of, you know, evolution, um, you know, for the the, the support. Well, let's, or hope, the, uh... let's hope they've got most of my wife's genes because obviously she's the, she's the yeah, alpha, but... isn't she? <laughs> yeah, when it comes to COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, I can only sympathise and tell you <laughs> that I... Can appreciate i hate flus i really hate it or like post-surgery where whatever it is you're having doesn't get better or something i i, I had surgery where well, i had the tonsils removed and I, I couldn't swallow for a week it was like agony and the guy i think i called him and he was just like yeah it's fine it's fine it'll go away in a day or two and i was just like and then like, i went back after seven days and he looked down and he was like oh yeah I've, there's a big lesion that i must have nipped you when i when i went down and i was like fuck here now it's like, oh yeah it's infected now as well so his some antibiotics it got better in like a day or a day it and must, half it, must be a, it must be a man thing because the only people who i know who have terrible luck are blokes that would never happen to <laughs> to a woman, woman. Would it? they're no. probably just stronger 
just a, probably you know, are, in, actually, in, yeah. a, in a weird I, way they're just better having witnessed my wife give birth three times i can i can testament to the fact that they are stronger yeah a lot stronger yeah. but then again they can't lift like 200 kg can they so it's like well probably some women actually <laughs> yeah probably but, quite easily could but, but yeah <laughs> that, that doesn't do a case any favor she's given birth to life three times i can lift 200 kg <laughs> yeah well and what <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> Tina would like that, and I can't live 200 kg now. Anyway, I suppose it depends in what. So it's all relative. Um, but yeah, I mean, at least you're at least you're repairing, and hopefully now you've you've probably got some new variant, uh, which you've got antibodies for now as well. I don't know, Jamie. I don't feel like I'm beating this one. I think it's got ball and gone. I think, I think the reason I don't think I think my antibodies are beaten. I think they've just got this guy is it's just this dying no slowly. Whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, he's smelling I, for heaters. Let's go to a better host. That uh, is pretty rough. Yeah. I actually don't understand how you've got it and I haven't because I was like, uh, what's that thing where it's really like chronically ill for like 10 years um, until I had that surgery and stuff got better. But, but like, but you, you weren't ill for that long and then. I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. London. Um, I think my immune system was reasonably strong, and it is. But it's only once you have children, and they bring all that crap back from nursery and school and whatnot, that you realise it? actually, yeah. it's not. It's only because you've been shielded. Because generally, in civilized adult life, people don't go to work ill, and you don't catch it. Whereas kids just hug each other, lick each other. They're just petri Dude. dishes for infection. And to it, be honest, man. I'm not surprised that I've got it because with three kids, one's eight, one's six, one's two, the probability of, of them bringing something back. And obviously what the, the schools do at the moment uh, here in the UK is as soon as there's a positive uh, mm, result, they don't test, down, send the kid home. So the whole house is going to go down anyway. Um, <laughs> and then obviously my wife is working around it all the time at the moment as well. So she's, yeah. even though she's fully immune, she's a little bloody carrier as well yeah yeah so yeah. if i make it Sweet out of this game killer. you'd be a miracle <laughs> well i mean i can't say it's getting better but it is getting better but you know is it well i think oh, anyway it, it you is, are in really. the uk i think we're getting to the point where they're just saying that's it now you have to live with it i'm um, up for it maybe not <laughs> maybe that's a, a rash thing to say but most people are, like a lot of people are getting back i'm double vaccine now pretty much are all you my mates are How you have you been double vaccinated? You, you've got to be younger. Than you. Um, there was a um, well, I'm 35, so I had yeah, my first so vaccine a, done a in, in order. Day. Aren't you like 40? I'm 43. Oh, bloody look it. Um, and and then there was a pop up vaccine center that you could just go to. They they just opened them up in London, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna get my second because yeah. I'm sick of waiting to be honest. It's just like, aren't you worried? I realise this is basically just the COVID show and it's been 15 minutes. Aren't you worried about um, how you'll react to the second one? God, the first one some more reaction over the last week, Jamie. <laughs> I'm too far yeah, in too. now. I've, I've, I've had it twice. I've had side effects of the first vaccine. I've only got one more vaccine to go before I'm over Do you, it, do you even need the second vaccine after being like ill? Surely you've got everything that you need then. <sighs> I don't know. I don't feel, I don't feel any stronger. Like I said, you've just seen me have a hot sweat now with him, and that's with both the windows open. Either that, or I'm the first man to go through menopause. I don't know. It's it's, it's really, it's really affecting my manly. Virgin territory there. Yeah, you've actually got a yeah, womb. Really affecting my manlyhood. This uh, bloody disease. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, my arm hurt slightly less on the second one than it did the first one. Oh, I felt no. I felt. I feel no. I felt no pain during the. Mm. injection it was the side effect i developed like a, a proper smoker's cough for about four weeks yeah um that's pretty crap truth yeah. be told especially when you haven't smoked what are you gonna do um right i'm sorry with you. sorry um <laughs> let's jump into the real shit not that that wasn't real that was our lives um, I haven't painted at all. Oh, you'll also, whoever watches the Hupper show and is watching this show will realise I didn't do a Hupper show. And truthfully, I actually just forgot. And it got to like four o'clock and I was like, I've got nothing. Um, and I've not painted and I had prepared nothing. So I just thought, you know what? 
just fuck it just live life a little bit um but what i do have is a lot of these um little bad girls obviously that's just a box but um my cast has sent me the two latest models i've got now so i've got like i'm not really looking forward to it but i started already preparing all the models for the uh inevitable tool sales you know because obviously i sold 13 last time so <laughs> i've got a lot of boxes to uh, pack up i didn't even bother packing boxes for that one uh which is probably why i didn't sell any but um yeah i don't know i don't know what really i'm going with that but i'm not painting anything which is the elder which is what i want to do still yeah, obviously I saw that show. yeah yeah um it wasn't particularly yeah still that's what i want to do and and um as a brief up up a limited look wait <laughs> it's like a takeover liner um do you see it's got the Hubble Show logo? Yeah, okay. So let me explain my jokes. Um, yeah, I've got like four people working on Elder ter Terrain. Um, and they're all super committed and really excited. And I haven't heard from them in like seven or eight days. So I should probably chase that up. But I've, I've kind of had a mental switch off once I get that started. Tina's leaving tomorrow. Again? I know there's certain parties that would like to have that situation <laughs> and i understand but i'm fucking sick of it uh but yeah yeah she's going again possibly a month this time um wow so really i should throw myself into the painting hold on uh and we're back um anyway yeah it, 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 uh, that's that is what i should do it really actually is is immerse myself in like a real solid warhammer project but it's it's really hard to paint uh, in that style line and we've been through this before I, I find it yeah. difficult um because it doesn't there's no freedom you're so restricted but i just love the end result so um hold on so yeah let's uh let's do what we came here right? we're 17 minutes in of social okay oh, um like, let's subscribe see how far and share. we get let's see how far we get with this uh firstly also i just want to say thank you to the people who wish me well that's one thing i forgot to say i watched your show and in the comments there are a few people who wish me well um and sent their sympathies to me so thanks for that i did appreciate it cheered me up a bit um but also my voice is still a bit croaky when it goes a bit too dry i go into coughing fits as well so bear with me let's see how far i get with this this week's show i might have to take a few pauses or put it on mute um, <coughs> while we're doing the news, <coughs> and as if on cue. Um, so the first piece of news that caught my eye was this release by Hero Models. Now, a lot of people will know Hero Models do a lot of bust. They do. They have a very extensive academic line, um, which is very popular with painters. Now, their first bust, the Orc one, um, the original one, was a very popular bust. I don't know if you recall seeing it, Jamie, but it's one of those busts where when a lot of people jump over from doing wargaming and they want to have a go at a bus for the first time, it's the first one they generally pick up. And there's been some fantastic versions of it. It's the, the goblin with the diamond. No, uh, no, no, I think that's beyond. Okay. That's beyond yep. miniatures. Yeah. You, yeah. You'll know it when you see it. Um, but you know, artists at every level have, have had an attempt at it. Um, there's been some really good pro versions. there have been some really good amateur versions. Um, I've done one version, I'm halfway through a second version. It's a really nice little bust, very iconic, and it's quite infamous within the painting community. What they've done now is they've come back with a second orc bust, which is the one that's pictured on the screen now, uh, which uh, you've imaginatively called the orc, Academic Orc Bust 2.0, Jamie. Um, and that is what you see on the screen now. It's a slightly different styling. I really do like it. Um, I didn't think they could improve on the Orc bus they had done before, but this is a very different character. Um, and they've done it in such a way that even if you have had a few goes on the original Orc bust, you've seen it now, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you've had a go on the original Orc bust, I think this is sufficiently different to give you, uh, to pick up and have a go. Now, the box art is very nicely done. However, I checked both their website and the Instagram post, and I couldn't see any credit for an artist on there. Now, or for a sculptor either. Now, I'm wondering whether- Did they ever I do know, it? I thought, well, I know somehow Hero, I always thought they- Yeah, I know here is owned by one guy. I don't know whether he does the sculpts and paints himself. I don't know, which is why 
it hasn't been done. I also know at the moment, I think he's sharing a studio with Mark Maskeland, who kind of moved in together and they're, they're doing that. So it might be the case that he's done this under the stewardship of, of Mark Maskeland. I don't know. But I do really enjoy the palette that's been used here. I love the greens. I mean, green is my favourite colour anyway, but the, the strong saturated tones work really well. The tribal work on the chest is really nicely done. Whoever has done that, I don't know. If anybody knows, credit them in the description. But I have looked extensively, and it's not on the it's website, and it's not on the Instagram post. So what we after? So this model specifically? The... Yes. Is that what you're wondering? Yeah. yeah. Basically, they have a gallery, uh, and <coughs> in the gallery, it does say who did. However, I can't see a gallery entry for that specific model. I can see. Yeah. So, but Mark does paint, um, he did the box art for the, the orc bust, but the full version, because yeah. you know, there's two versions of it. So Mark, Mark did the box art for that. And the sculpture is Raul Law Torre. So th this doesn't, well, it could be the same sculpture. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, if you do know, let us know. Yeah. It's priced at 27 pounds, um, which I think is a reasonable, reasonable price for a, uh, academic Euros. Uh, Sorry. It's 27 euros just as a. Oh, is it euros? A, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so slightly less in pounds then. But yeah, yeah I think it, I think it's a reasonable price. Um, it's a nice little bust and um, some great character in the face as well. I think it looks a lot like the orcs from the um, World of Warcraft kind of style. So. Yeah, with the tusks, as it were. Yeah. Any, yeah. any thoughts, Jamie, on that? Yes, the greens are always. I I I um I kind of agree with you actually. It, in a weird way, the painting style looks like um. Oh my god, uh, David Aroba in a way, um, <clears throat> just because of the, I guess the vibrancy. But and and all the artworks look like I've always liked their box arts a lot. Um, yeah, and it it looks a bit like a co yeah well the, like the combination for the skin at least it's definitely airbrush mixed with with overlays so yeah i'm envious of the paint like it's enjoyable uh i haven't painted any of their busts but actually i think it's i agree with you on the uh, anatomical and uh, yeah academy anyway i like i do like that because it means you can jump in and jump out quite quickly it's not a huge yeah, commitment but you still get yeah they're quite small as well even for for academic busts so you can cover you can get coverage on there fairly quickly yeah and 23 quid a model i guess if you combine with the mate or something and then you could share postage as well yeah. uh you could get probably the whole range for under like 100 quid which is pretty cool it might be there's more than four okay a bit more but yeah still it's pretty good so yeah generally i think it's a good release um i i personally would like to start some academics for for my own thing as well uh but i haven't <laughs> That's a good story. Um, but yeah, I do. I like it. I do like it. Uh, and I like the paint job a lot. Yeah. Right. Shkaboosh. Okay, so the uh, next piece of news that I wanted to cover, just because just I thought it'd be interesting, actually, is a couple of weeks ago, Warhammer or Games Workshop announced that they are releasing something called Warhammer Plus. Now, if you don't know what that is, Jamie, that is going to be their new streaming it, subscription service, um, which all the animation. So we've talked about it in the past where shows, they've, yeah. they've uh, employed directly some YouTubers. So the guy who did the Astartes um, series, and also they've got some in-house animating te animation teams working on things like Angels of Death and... Um, and whatnot <laughs> some shows and what they've decided which was a bit of surprise for me is that it's going to go behind a paywall um and it's going to be priced at 4.99 a month uh in pounds so a couple of euros more you know maybe five 5.99 in terms of uh, euros now that surprises me in the sense that on the face of it it doesn't seem that much and I agree, it's it's not much in terms of us for hobbyists how we spend. However, when you compare Disney Plus is seven ninety nine a month, um, <laughs> and Netflix is uh, about eight pound a month as well, um, and, and 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 whatnot, 
when there are so many subscription services already available and, and, and subscription services like Apple and whatnot that are coming onto the market uh, are struggling to get traction, um, it seems interesting that they've put this behind a paywall. Now, it's worth saying that there is more to this than just um, the shows. There are going to be apps which you can get in order to get online rule books. Um, all their content that used to be on Twitch for free is now going to go behind this paywall as well. So they used to have weekly shows, weekly podcasts. It's unclear at the minute whether they're going to be additional content or whether they're just going to put the existing content that they would normally put out behind the paywall. Um, there is also going to be exclusive models or two exclusive models. One of them is pictured there, which is the Vindicare Assassin. And the only way you'll be able to get a hold of him is if you sign up to this for a year and then I suppose you'll get it unlocked part way through or you'll get it at the start of your subscription pack. And then they've alluded to the fact that there will be some certain VIP events. Now, I don't know whether that's a case of once things become normal and you go to games day or whatnot, there'll be special VIP events for Warhammer Plus members or whether there'll be online events exclusively for uh, Warhammer members. It's unsure. So it's not, it's more than just a streaming service they've thrown in <coughs> a few extra things as well but for me i think it's probably going to be your hardcore fans who are because i think that works out about 49 pound a month 49 pound a year i think they said if you buy a yearly subscription you get a slight discount so it's 50 pounds so you it's save not, 10 quid like yeah um, i mean it's not big Christmas money is it yeah, in terms really of hobbies, it's not big money. Hobbies will spend more than fifty pound on a model in a given week. But I think once you start to post analyze the content and you look at, you compare it as is naturally the case to other online streaming services. Mm -hmm. um, I'm yeah, not sure. It's interesting. The there. They didn't go down the road of a just flogging it to any of the streaming services for relatively cheap. But I feel like I they didn't want to maybe tarnish their their brand by doing that and, and they probably wouldn't have bought a lot of them because they're quite niche there is um, that but i heard people say that a lot and i i've seen other reasons why not and i agree with the reasons why not the reason i think they haven't done it is twofold one if you if you sell it to someone like netflix it's not beyond them to cancel it after one season if it's not making the numbers they want it to make. And although Warhammer is fairly big in terms of the gaming world, I still think it's relatively unknown in terms of the mainstream world. So I don't <clears> think <throat> your average Joe's going to sit down and watch a Warhammer cartoon. Yeah. The well, other point about that as so well is, I think when you start working with other uh, companies like that, you start losing creative control. Um, yeah. And I think that's one of the main reasons. I, don't, I personally believe Hollywood probably has come knocking already on Games Workshop store. I think the reason they haven't accepted it is because they realize once you get a big studio involved, you lose creative control and the beast that they will end up with will be nothing like the mm. characters. You know, the Space Marines will become super good heroes, won't they? They won't be the kind of <laughs> characters with depth yeah. that we know now. They're not strictly good. They're not strictly bad. So yeah. I think the reason they've done that is to keep the creative control, I suspect. Yeah, which does make sense. I also think, um, like, I think that overheads must be so low on this service. Um, like, I, I probably actually, in a weird way, the technical side of things is, is potentially one of the biggest costs that they'll have. You know, a streaming service to pay for that kind of infrastructure. Obviously, you've got Amazon and stuff yeah. that will do it out of the box, but they're not cheap. But So I, I, I kind of think that for five quid, they're like, let's just see, even if we get, like, a couple of percent of the, the the entire you know warhammer fan base that plays currently because they'll know what their sales are they probably cover their costs anyway yeah and i think why not i think try? i think the timing of it is a bit unfortunate because i think obviously the world now is coming out of what has been mm -hmm. a yeah. weird year and a half had this happened i think and i think the, the idea has only come about because we went into this i think if we hadn't gone yeah. into this this wouldn't have been talked about but had they managed to launch this a bit sooner when we were probably on lockdown number two or lockdown number three, I think the take-up might have been a bit better. I don't know. I mean, Warhammer fans work, are, yeah. are fiercely loyal, aren't they? And there will mm. be a lot of people who will be looking at that model. And there's another exclusive Orc model as well, thinking actually £50 for two models. 
I'll ha- I'll have. I think you already picked anyway. one, actually. But yeah, still. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So the model's like thirty-two quid or something. If you were to buy it by itself, anyway. Yeah. And so, like twenty quid, like that's basically nothing. And and also, uh, you know, you said it's not in the mainstream, but then I saw uh, an app, an advert on YouTube for Android, and the Games Workshop game that wasn't developed by Games Workshop, just the IP, obviously sold to a games company. <laughs> Um, it had like 1.8 million downloads just for a mobile game, which to me is like means that not people who though, weren't it? in more ham- second. It's not big though in terms of streams. I think if if they had done a million yeah, streams yeah. on Netflix, it's still not enough for them to even yeah. hit the top ten. Yeah, unless unless yeah yeah right. But I mean, I I think it makes sense to do it in house because then at least you can just test the waters and see if anybody wants. The other thing is is Warhammer Plus sounds a lot like Google Plus, and that was dog shit. Um, I will be interested. I don't even care for the models, but I'm not their target market. For me, for me, it's a bit on the nose in terms of Disney Plus. I just don't know why. That's oh, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, no, I, and, I and, pe- say... and people have com- and people have complained about Disney Plus, saying that you know, in terms of at the minute, it's largely it. just a, 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 a library of content that some people already own, other than the exclusive yeah. TV shows of which we've only had about three or four, people are saying mm. it's not worth the money. And that's Disney with its entire back catalogue for seven ninety nine. So um different catalog. But like fish, you said, it's targeting it's yeah. targeting a very different market. Some people are thinking, I've you know, I've never had this kind of content. Um mm. the, you know, yeah. this, this, they, they've got their second comic book series coming out, which is launched under the Marvel label as well. So they are making moves what the what the end game is so to speak i don't know whether they'll retain it it's just long-term exposure probably oh you mean for the show right got you yeah yeah fuck knows um but they've got enough money if they just sold all their shares they could power themselves for a long time now there you go and that's well that's kind of an overview of the content then so there you've got from left to right, what's going to be included in, in your subscription service. So as I said there already, you've got event extras. Is it White Dwarf? <clears> I've got no idea what, sorry? You get White Dwarf. If White Dwarf went back and they had like White Dwarf magazine 150. Dwarf? Yeah, well, it says it there. Yeah, look, Warhammer Vault oh, and it's got the codex and the White Dwarf oh, is right, the, okay, yeah. um, is the, yeah. well, basically I would 100% <laughs> subscribe to that if it was, um, if it was old white dwarves, not just current, like I'm talking like 20, 25 years old um, and searchable. I'd probably pay a lot more actually if, if it was searchable. I'd pay like 300 quid a year for that. I can now imagine that. Just typing Elder and getting all the Elder references in White Dwarf. If you could search and filter by images, it would be amazing. Um, sorry. <laughs> VIP events. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's because I don't play much. Well, I say I don't play much. I don't play at all anymore. But it does. It does look like they've scratched around for anything they could find. It, it seems mm. like a bit. Of a, to me, it seems a bit much. Yeah. Much. So obviously, your event extras seems suitably elusive. That you don't know what it is. Whether it's going to be an mm. online thing or physical thing. You've got your digital white dwarf, which some people will already be just subscribed to anyway. Um, digital codexes. Um, I know when I used to play back in the day, I used to love thumbing through a physical codex as opposed to trying to scroll through a digital one to play. So unless the bookmarking system on that's got a lot better, um, I can't see that being worth the money. You've got your two exclusive miniatures, which you've already alluded to, Jamie. You only get to pick one. Um, You've got your animations, of which I think five or six have been announced. You've got your apps, which some people will already be subscribed to anyway, but now that'll be folded into the service. And then you've got exclusive shows on Warhammer TV, which is effectively a uh, a podcast show podcast, anyway, yeah. which I've never I've never watched even when it was free on Twitch. <laughs> so, <coughs> so for me, yeah, four ninety nine isn't that much, but when you look at it, there's there's not much there, is there really? No, it it, it just I need to hear about that Warhammer White Dwarf vault uh and the codex vault I, i'd be surprised if they show their back catalog I probably don't even have them anymore. no i think i think what it will be is ever since yeah. they went digital the white dwarf from them will mm-hmm. still be available yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, which is I boring. I don't think back into the archives. Yeah. Yeah. If that was an elder model, I probably would get it if it was good. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I'll be interested to see if anybody else... Most of our viewers don't really do Warhammer anyway, right? Well, 17%, wasn't it? And that's just a close-up of the, the other exclusive model you can get as well. Why'd you get such a big base with that one, but but no base with that one? Harsh, isn't it? No base for which one? Massive base. Why well, it hasn't, actually. The irony, of if you see the whole model in real life, can you see down the bottom, you can see like a little ladder? Mm -hmm. It goes all the way down to a 32 male base, so it looks very weird. <laughs> it's very top-heavy. Yeah, that so it's a ladder funny. that goes all the way down to a 32 mil base. So it's it's legal Perfectly in the balanced. game in that sense for movement yeah. and measurement. Um, and then oh, it's yeah. a really top heavy. That's really weird. <clears throat> Fair play to them. Um, yeah. I did actually see this. I know nothing about it, though, but they're redoing it, I guess. Kill Team. Is that right? Yeah, so I just thought it'd be interesting to look at the model. So what they announced earlier today was the... Octarius preview, which is essentially a new sector in the Warhammer 40k universe, whereby there's a new uh, conflict uh, setting off, and they're going to be launching some campaign books and things around 40k from there. But the most interesting announcement from it was the fact that they're going to relaunch Kill Team. So Kill Team, as it was, is dead and gone, Jamie. That rule set has changed. So. They've mm. spent quite a while building upon it by releasing supplements to add extra units to your army or your warband and whatnot. However, what we've got here is a new box set with two new factions in it. So you've got the Death Corps of Krieg, which historically were only available from Forge World as resin pieces, whereas now they're multi-part plastic kits. So a lot of people are excited about that. And then they've also done a plastic kit for the Orc Commandos, which previously hasn't been available. What I haven't got pictured here is it also mm. comes with some scenery as well. So it's a, a starter box that you can split between two people and get stuck in. Um, once again, I think we're seeing an, evol an evolution in terms of um, models, in my view, um, in terms of the quality that you're getting in a starter box. Um, I'm, I, don't know about you, well. but I don't know about you, but does it look to you like they're moving towards a more saturated... Uh, mm. palette as well um yeah surprised with the guards certainly yeah and the orcs look a Evia... lot more green instead of just that dull green that they had yeah heavy and metal have always been very clean but they've always used fairly muted uh um yeah palettes yeah, the, on most of the yeah, pieces the last, like, other than the odd one however years. if you look at it here i see a very different style i mean it's still heavy metal it's still clean it's still follows the rules that they normally do but i think what you're seeing is a lot more saturation in color on both the orcs and as you said the deaf corpse of krieg were traditionally quite dark kind of not raisin weren't they yeah browns Whereas now they've gone for some fairly bright blues and turquoises in there which makes them pop and i think the paint jobs are, are fantastic and complement the the model kits very well but i thought it's quite interesting that they seem to have uh, <coughs> adapted their uh palette choices it's um uh, it's it, yeah it's weird for the the death corpse to to look like this i do agree i think the the jobs are really good the orcs are really good they're they're busy enough and dirty enough but also quite clean which has been a bit of a difference maybe i you know i've not been the biggest fan but i think these orcs actually look quite good yeah they're not um they look they look stupid and crazy enough, which is probably what I felt like was missing for a while. Like they had no they personality all... is probably yeah. whereas now I think yep. I think they do like this this guy's wearing a stupid little beanie for Christ. Like you know, adds character for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean obviously because they move in such big numbers, um, yeah. you used to get that case where they all started to look the same after a while, but I think yeah. they've managed to capture a lot of individual character in each one of these as opposed to just a a green tide so to speak mm. which is cool that is cool like who could be bothered to paint an, or an orc army i don't know um i thought about it because i love orcs um and then i kind of looked at a photo and i was like whoa you're crazy um but i think these models are actually fairly decent i don't know why 
I'm saying that. Um, <laughs> as in, I'm surprised. But yeah, I, I don't hate them. I, I mean, it's possible it is the paint jobs. It does have a big impact on everything. But um, I do think, I just think that generally they're actually quite cool. Yeah, that's why I, I wanted to feature them. I know tradition, we haven't, traditionally we haven't featured Games Workshop every week, but more and more, I think their releases are, are becoming very interesting in terms of the sculpting uh, direction they're taking in terms of the character, in terms of the detail. I'm finding myself more and more attracted to models thinking actually I wouldn't mind picking that up to paint whereas there had been a long stretch where there was no interest in painting any mm. of them primarily because I wasn't gaming but even as a piece to just pick up to have a go at there wasn't much there but I, I generally do think something interesting is happening in the studio at the minute because I I there's been a few AOS releases that have uh, come out in the last couple of months uh, big creatures big demons there's been a few sisters of battle characters um, that have come out that I'm thinking actually increasingly there's a lot of sculpts coming out I think I wouldn't mind picking that up just to have a go at so mm. yeah um, as long as they catch my eye I'll feature them yeah it's interesting they're redoing the kill team rules that's not even that old but maybe it's older than I realise but we were talking about doing it back in the I, day. yeah I think it's it's going back a good five or six years now actually I think so which is about the right Good time point. for them to yeah. do a retread. I think historically, obviously, we've just seen them redo um, rules for the main systems, whereas now they seem to be supporting the smaller games. We've seen it with Blood Bowl. That's had mm. a second rule set and a new box set come out. So it looks like the most popular skirmish games are here to stay and that they will update the rules. Yeah, so the next thing that's on the screen, they also did um, an announcement of some other orc uh, releases that were coming out and i thought this was interesting as well this is apparently meant to be the roughly the same size as a bane blade um so it's a fairly big um model i did see release. it and i went pack it now when i saw it yeah yeah so it's, it's a fairly big model release uh called the kill rig i think as as with most of the kits it's a dual kit which makes another big creature as well in a different mm. style um mm -hmm. but now you're seeing um the yorks who haven't had much love for a, a few years, getting a lot of new sculpts and new additions to bring them up to speed. Um, that is a uh, terrain piece, which I think looks god awful, yeah. to be honest. Um, this one I really liked as well. So you've got a, uh, uh, a shark boss. squid, a scrag, scrag yeah. bad, scrag bad. Um, but once again, you're seeing some character in there, both in terms of the the rider and the steed. Um, mm which you didn't before. It was enough to just put a big orc on a big monster and it would sell, but they're starting to um, think more about the character. So um, yeah, that was an interesting release and that doesn't look like a small model either. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's another one that's been pictured as well, a red one, which has got some nice character to it. Um, oh no. These are all the ones we've got. Yeah, okay. And that's a, 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 a leader character that's been released, Beast Boss. Uh, once again, it's got some nice character on it. Um, the orcs are starting to have different styles now, so they don't look like the orcs that they they used to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's as excited as I can get about an orc. Put it that way. <laughs> uh, they've kind of mixed it with the old orcs and Lord of the Ring orcs almost. There's like a a new. Some of them look old, like that that Death Cops top left looks like <laughs> the old orcs. Um, yeah. But interestingly, their muscles kind of look like Gork and Mork Orcs, which were almost a little bit more true scale, as it were. Um, I, th I, think what they've, I think what they've had to do as well is be careful and not completely alienate uh, an entire army. Mm. So there'll be a lot of people who've spent years and years painting tide upon tide of Orcs. So if they changed them too drastically, um, it would render all that redundant, wouldn't it? So... Yeah, they did that with marines though i know it's law wise they were uh so it wouldn't surprise me but it's just good to see another army get a load of new models that uh, and one of the original armies as well you know um yeah it was orc spe space marines and elder and now finally no, if, they've I, actually... if i was an orc player i'd be quite happy with what they teased yeah. actually there's a lot of nice stuff coming out for them especially as the kit bash from this kit alone is is huge you know you could incorporate a lot yeah. of this with the old models if you wanted to and it's kind of what orcs are all about really 
Um, and I do think it's quite cool that they've added some new beasts, which is just in general is is fun. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see the prices, which which terrifies me because in my head it's going to be like 120 quid, and that's going to uh, yeah. be like, yeah. <laughs> So those poor parents that get suckered in, eh? Um, and that, I don't know, it could be like an 80 quid job. Obviously, it's conjecture and I've got no idea. Um, but I'll be, I just, yeah, I'll be curious to see. I'd, I'd like to see some of these included in a box set, at least as a promotional sort of intro. I think that could be cool because sometimes they do that where they do do like a box yeah, set they and generally... you get a lot of value for money. Yeah, but they generally don't do that until they've made their sales on mm itemized stuff so yeah, yeah, if sure. any of this stuff does find its way into a um start box. collecting box um it won't be near to christmas i don't think mm. yeah um i can assume neither of us will buy this stuff but we can comment and say at least it's cool yeah like i said i i, I think the the uh, sculpting direction of the game is really nice. I think they they are really nice models, but like I said, primarily I don't play anymore. The only thing I play mm. from Games Workshop is Blood Bowl. Um, so as a result, ninety percent of their releases, it has to be mm. a really nice model for me to want to pick it up and paint. And then yeah. once I've got it, once it's painted, what do I do with it? So that's the problem. But I can I can yeah. say that you know their models are getting better. Yeah, which is good for everyone. Nothing bad can come from that up in the old competition. Um, yeah. Well, you made it through at least. Just I wanted to, uh, I wanted to oh, look at the Beyond Miniatures. Um, uh, of course. Kickstarter. So here is the Kickstarter. Um, I will just add uh, that is, is happened already for me so that basically shows that i have backed it already uh right with a cheeky 43 pounds um hard-earned cash right there so you can take it away yeah so i just wanted to come back and touch upon this we in our last show we uh showed the teaser that beyond miniatures released about this kickstarter and you alluded to the fact that you had already seen um, a few of the models already and yep. it is now live so um, Dragoth's Children is based on the artwork of Victor Titan and they've basically borrowed a lot of his concept design well not borrowed they've taken a lot of concept di design and art in order to release a um, range of busts and full-scale models and as you can see um, it's a very alternative fantasy style. It's one that I haven't That's why I seen. Said the high fantasy, yeah. That's yeah, kind of... it's one that I haven't seen before. Um, and if you know Victor's work, he tends to do a lot of work in terms of Magic the Gathering and that kind of stuff. He does the artwork for those cards. So that gives you an idea of the level of or the kind of art style he does. So I thought it'd be interesting, Jamie, just to have rather than me talk to the screen and try to remember sculptors' names and painters who are involved, <laughs> I thought it'd be interesting just to have a scroll down and, and see what's available. And then obviously you've got some insight, I believe, because you've seen some of these and possibly, so maybe you can... Sweet, sweet insider knowledge. Um, for some yeah, comment. yeah, well, when I went round to uh, his gaff, um, I can't remember when it was, two months ago, maybe, three months ago, he had... Uh, yeah, he had, I think, two or three of these versions painted. Um, and I, I, yeah, he's really, yeah, right. So there, um, so he's already, he's already released them now. Um, and they're, 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 I don't know if they're bigger than, they're bigger than they look. Uh, in fact, okay, yeah, I, I, I couldn't find the, um, the photos in a reasonable quality because it's quite zoomed out. Uh, I say, I, we, we were both there, but yeah. Uh, I've seen these in person. I've seen this one, and uh, I think one or two of the others. And I saw, I guess, I guess all of these. Yeah, before they were painted, like the the the, the main one, and and the the amount of effort and uh, like the whole project, I think, was a huge. I think they've alluded to it uh, at the bottom, like how long it's taken them, like two years mm -hmm. of of labor, and it's really a labor of love. If you just hear him, yeah, there you go. You just hear him talking about it as well and like all the different artists and the sculptors and 
I guess they're kind of overall vision for the whole project. Um, so I'm super, super glad that it was funded. Not only funded, but, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't exactly know what they need or, or what they were after. But, you know, if you ask for 10 grand, you get 30. And I, I'm sure it's got more legs to grow as well when probably people come in, don't they, normally yeah, at the end of the project so as well. Time at the time recording, there's only 10 days left. So it hasn't been a, a particularly long Kickstarter, has it, really? I think they did 15 days. Did they? I think, yeah. Yeah, which so, kind of makes sense, though, because you just drag it out, really, don't you? Yeah, like, to be fair to the guys, I mean, you've got two two kinds of Kickstarters, haven't you? You've got Kickstarters which fund, but also keep it going as long as possible because they know they want to make all their money in the Kickstarter. Yeah. And they're not really interested in the longevity of the line after that. And then you've got Kickstarters like this, where to be fair, they could have put it on for 28 days and nobody would have thought any any mm. worse of them. But they've done just what they need to do to get the line funded. And it's quite clear that they're interested in, in supporting the continuation of the line as well, which is nice, um, rather than using it strictly as a pre-ordering service. Yeah. So yeah, I, th I, th I think it's fundamentally you the idea is like it. Um, which which one have you gone this for? One. This little oh, bad right, girl, okay. mermaid. Yeah, yeah. I think I went for. I think I'm going to go for the 75 mil, the 110 on a full size. These, these models are huge. Like I think there's a ruler here. Like the thing I, I hadn't appreciated show. the smaller one was this was the 75 mil. Mm. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be massive. Like that dragon is fucking yeah. huge. He's going to paint that, which I'm genuinely quite excited to see what he does with, yeah, uh, with with such a thing, especially because like the paint job on this is just so damn good. I mean, yeah, it's it's, a, it's an outrage, really, isn't it? Um, yeah. Like to he paint. showed, I think he showed earlier today on Instagram. Like I said, I've been off it, for, been off social media for a while while I've been ill, um, but I saw that, and he's shown a kind of step by step of the mm. dragon skin. Um, I did see that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, it's a bit like the owl thing, isn't it? Luminous, isn't it? Both. Both. It doesn't start that lady. way. That's what's fascinating. Sorry. It doesn't start that way. Like he's using browns, isn't he? In like kind of yeah. not quite yellows, but and then like the last two, it just comes to life with feeling like it really is shiny. But Luminous. even the uh, the uh, rider cloak uh, yeah. companion standing next to him, she yeah. looks almost. She looks yeah. almost luminous as well, which is so. So that's what I mean. It's amazing. With white. Yeah. yeah, it's like a grey so pearl, he isn't it? Almost. Then, because he's See, done I think so. Stuff. Right. I think so. The latest I, I, Albert's yeah. name's mentioned further down. <clears> yeah. <throat> yeah. So I just wondered if he was going to do a box art as well. No, no box art. Um, I think Albert has just been moral support the whole way through. <laughs> okay. um, I think it's, well, possible Aroba actually might be doing a box art as well. Um, yeah, I think his is linked to a stretch goal. So if a stretch goal like a, is a tutorial hit, or he, something. Yeah, he will do a tutorial on Miniature Art Academy, Jamie. Um, so that's how he's how he's involved. Um, I would have liked to see Alejandro uh, do some box arts because obviously... He, He's his partner in Beyond Miniatures, so it's owned mm. equally uh, Beyond Miniatures yeah. with Alejandro and Arnau. And I know obviously Arnau does a lot of the box arts because that tends to be what he does. But Alejandro mm. is a very, very good painter. I would have liked, <coughs> I would have liked to see him possibly, even if it's alternative versions of box arts that Arnau's already done. It'd be nice to see him um, put yeah. a brush to model. Just yeah, well. Um... Obviously, I have no idea, and I don't think they're saying who or what. Um, but uh, yeah, I agree completely. He 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 could maybe he's not got time, or maybe now just wanted to do it, and I, I don't know. I know that um, for the sculpts done by Lua, um, I know that I now work really closely with her, and I'm assuming Alejandro did as well. Um, obviously, when I speak to her now, we're mostly <laughs> talking not about what he's doing with her, but Leah, yeah, like kind of how yeah, from the, the what basics of it going because Alejandro is is still in Spain so from what mm -hmm. I understand he basically runs the um logistics of the business so all the shipping all the boxing of the models it's all yeah. done there he has all the product there in terms of their existing line of what already they already do mm -hmm. I suspect it'll be more of the same as well um when this yeah. goes 
gets ready to, um, to... Actually, actually i just realized as well i think hopefully we're going to do a video with an now and uh, <laughs> uh this week so either monday or tuesday okay um so obviously i i haven't asked you because i hate your guts um but it would be good if you come on the show uh i don't know if you have time though but if you do it'd be cool because then we can ask those all basically actually, we should have just said that because i i think basically if we do do that video almost every question will be asked because we'll be talking to them directly um no, but if yeah like i said let me know it'd be nice to get on on and chat to both yeah. of them because i do i do like the work they do with beyond miniatures i think they've done some really nice anatomic busts and it'd be good to pick their brains actually yeah. Um, yeah. about that kickstarter I agree completely. Uh, and I, I asked him, I think on Wednesday or Thursday, and that's just from a situation of just wanting to know more, I think. Yeah. You know, in general, because I, I like, like I said, to, um, are now like, for me personally, the, you know, the styles are, they're not elves. So it's hard for me to get super excited. But the one I picked, the mermaid elf lady, is that I think probably why I liked it uh, without even thinking about it. But also, um, I'm really, really excited to see the resin cast of them because I struggle to, and I'm even talking about my own models that I have sculpt. Like when I get them and they're finished by the sculptor and I see them in, in the renders, I'm like, Ugh. like not the same level as when they they turn up printed and cast. And I'm like, oh, so it's like, it's a weird thing for me. Um, so I think what, I think what will be interesting as well is now that you've got somebody who's done a Kickstarter as well, um, you can now properly evaluate whether it's worth Dragon Head yeah. having a go yeah. at a Kickstarter. Because I know it's something behind it's the scenes you've kind of talk, you've talked about, but you didn't know the level of work that was involved. But a lot of people yeah. say if you want to generate um, being noticed and also sales uh, to justify the overheads that mm. you do when you produce a model um, maybe releasing a wave of three or four models in one go as part of the kickstarter is a way to do it so hopefully now you've got somebody you can talk to about it yeah yeah and this and they're going through it like right now so i'll see their stress levels when we talk to them you know if they're covered in sweat and they're just shouting each other then we know that it's a stressful <laughs> um well, but i literally <laughs> yeah, exactly like right now, if I was ever going to do a Kickstarter, it'd probably be the time. Well, not ever, but I've got like three or four models that currently could make their way to Kickstarters because I've not really announced them or shown any. Mm. Kind of have, but not properly. But yeah, like I don't know, man. Like talking to her now, um, and like they're having to constantly release updates, answer comments, and I suppose it's like that's their job, so it's it totally makes sense. You know, yeah. they're they're there answering and and doing those things but i imagine like having a kid having a, a you know two full-time jobs um i don't and then doing like because even when the kickstarter ends they have to do that whole pledge manager shit yeah right and then when the pledge manager ends they have to actually probably chase some money get some addresses because other people dickheads don't enter all their details even though they've paid i've done that before not chasing mm. not and then um and then they actually have to box all the models and ship them um, I, I think that's the thing, isn't it? You see the big numbers, you go, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And then six months later, your living room's full of models that you have to stick yeah. in boxes. Um, yeah. You realise you hit that stretch goal where you promised everybody an exclusive art card in there, so you've got to put one of those in <laughs> yeah, there. Exactly. You hit another stretch goal where you said everybody will get a special sticker, so you've got to put that in there. And before you know it, um, Honestly. you're probably going to lose a week or two just boxing models up, so... Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. If it's not too successful, you think, "Why did I bother with Kickstarter?" Yeah, you almost, and then, you almost, it, and then yeah. if it's too successful, you're like, "Why did I bother with Kickstarter?" So, <laughs> you know, the yeah. the money soon loses its shine when you have to put all that work in. Yeah, especially when you get paid up front, and then you have to do the work for like four months, and you're like, "Ooh, I've spent all that money ages ago." <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, but don't, you know, don't start I genuinely... making comments like that because if people see this, they'll never back a Dragon Head Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, he's the guy who so he'll spend all the money before he's even boxed a model up. Well, I mean, you've spent it on getting the models done, getting the boxes, yeah, yeah. you know, parties, drinks. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's one. Of, uh, well, it's. I suppose it's a way you run your Kickstarter, isn't it? Um, is it one that's there purely to fund the making of the line, or are you going to try mm. and make a bit of profit while you're at it as well? I think a lot of people now. 
I think is what it's worth saying. I think a lot of people realize that once models go out, you don't know who's back to you. Um, mm. It could be flying, it's winging its ways to a, um, a recaster, recaster yeah. without you knowing. So I think a lot of people now realize this might be the only run they ever do. So the Kickstarter has to make, not only cover its cost, but also has to make me the profit that I, I would have expected it to do, yeah. but do it in a very concentrated period of time. Um, so there's there's multiple angles now with the Kickstarter. Yeah, and I think I think in a way Kickstarter is a good way to alleviate the issues of of costs because if you do have that huge influx of, you know, like all your sales, and you're not relying on other things, like yeah, it makes total sense. Like I, I'm excited to try it just from a, a an excitement point of view as well. But that that's that is that is the original from you can't see it. That's oh, it's a female body. From, yeah, um, I can see that. from Pedro and he like obviously it's my concept and stuff even though Diego did the drawings the sculpt work on it is just it's honestly I don't know how to sculpt obviously but I've seen other sculptors and I've seen this sculpt and I'm like Pedro you really are a f like he's a very talented man in a you know a full compliment to that's him a, that's a traditional sculpt then is it there's no 3D yeah no 3D, but it's it's almost tighter than 3D, in a in a in a weird way. Like his control over, like uh, just the small like there's there's buckles on these um, pockets, right? You're never gonna be able to see that. There's buckles on these pockets, and they must be like three three millimeters across the 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 thing, and then the buckle is like two millimeters across. Anyway, props to Pedro Fernandez. What? Well, it, it's kind of so I, I I said to you before I got ill, I started drawing again, hadn't I? I hadn't mm. picked up the pencil for about 25 years um, and I started drawing again. And there was some residue still there, but there's a lot of work to be done. But <laughs> having gone back to drawing again, even copying an image from a computer screen, I realised how different it is to painting because essentially painting is coloring in isn't mm. it mm -hmm. you'll put yeah. some artistic style into it but the work's there you're coloring the surfaces yourself you just need to know how those surfaces work yeah. and yeah, i think it's the same and... with sculptors i think the fact that they can form something from nothing mm -hmm. and then people come along and paint it mm -hmm. i'm not saying painting is easy but the level of skill is is completely different and i think i realized that having drawn again where you've got a blank piece of paper you've got no structure on there whatsoever and you all do it yourself and 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 i can see if i keep up with with, with drawing it is actually going to help my painting because you make information choices when drawing mm -hmm. something because you have to put all the information down that you mm -hmm. can actually use you can do using paint on a 3d yeah, sculpt as well yeah. you can almost illustrate on top of a model which i never I never used to think about it that way. I, you know, I used to interpret the volumes and whatnot, but I never thought about illustrating. So when you start looking at the information, some of the artists put on, like I think we were critiquing, not critiquing, but looking at David Aroba's uh, Dragon Rider, where we looked at all the information and age Remember, and weathering yeah. on the skin. And essentially all he's doing is treating the model like an illustrator yeah. um, and using yeah. the paint to put that on so i'm enjoying the drawing at the minute i'm gonna try to stick to it and i think in the long term if i do improve i think it will actually inform and assist with my painting as well i would agree with that yeah it's one thing i've always been envious but never bothered to ever even con contemplate well, you got four weeks but... off now jamie <laughs> four weeks off by yourself four maybe weeks. that's something you can do get 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 down to your hobby craft get yourself some hb pencils um and a pad yeah hb and start sketching the old soft pencils yeah i mean it definitely won't happen but um if uh <laughs> if i paint at all i'll be happy i should set myself a goal or plan shouldn't i anyway and i say anyway to myself because uh i don't want to talk about it until i've actually started painting if that makes sense because mm -hmm. it's just boring because i keep doing it uh but yeah i'm uh i'm, I'm excited to i found me finishing the the, art, the box art and then and then one of the models will go out i'm excited to um just to see, see the this. finished box art i did see the sneak peek that looks very very good yes they very are talented good. those those top level <laughs> pro painters aren't they like it's ridiculous actually really i mean it makes sense they're professional <laughs> 
Whew. It's good to catch up. Cheeky one hour, five minutes. Yep. Another episode in the bag. <laughs> Get that sweet, sweet episode bank. Episode 13 as well. Next week's 14. That's uh, well, 12 is three months. Going fortnightly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I meant, sorry, I should have said next episode. Mm -hmm. Next next episode, we might be champions of, of Europe, which is beautiful. Football? Pot potentially. Like I said, I'm not as there was nothing going on. I thought I'd, I'd watch this tournament from the beginning because <laughs> there's not much to do, is there, at the moment mm. in, in the world. And, uh, what, what you know, I've started to get quite emotionally involved. The uh, Patriotic, semi-final yeah. was quite tense. Very tense, mm, in fact. Indeed, yeah. I thought they were looking. I didn't think they were going to do it at one point. Um, I don't think that was a penalty. Yeah. So I think we've got through. No, I don't know either. But their their goal shouldn't have stood either. We should have had a free kick for the. Before, we should have had a foul before they had their foul. So I guess it swings and roundabouts, or swings and ladders, yeah. um, noughts and crosses. I have, um, I, I have to say, like I said, I don't I don't follow football, football much. Obviously, yeah. I was aware of the older teams, particularly the the nineteen nineties mm. and whatnot. But from what I've seen of these guys, what I do like is I really like their attitudes. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I really you know, do. They seem to be quite grounded young men, uh, sensible young men, uh, taking up some nice um, moral fights that they decided they want to. Yeah. Um, and I think they're showing some real leadership in a time when we don't have much, I don't believe, in the way of leadership or real role models for kids to look up to. So regardless yeah, of what the outcome is on Sunday, um, I think, you know, I think you, you could go far wrong than, than to hold them up as some role models. I think they really united the country. I do like them. Um, and obviously the manager has got a really good head on his shoulders as well. I always respond well and respect people who've got a, uh, a good head on their shoulders. And not just physically. Um, I think that I think that that's probably what Gareth's done very well. Is he's taken out potentially potential damaging egos who are good players. I still think yeah. he is picking the best team, but somehow he's he's locked it all down, so we don't have any massive beefs internally, which is helping us for sure. Um, <coughs> but he seems like but, a nice guy. I mean, you can never know because you only yeah, see what yeah. you see on the camera. But he seems yeah. like a nice guy himself. Um, yeah, yeah, and I a think grounded he is. guy as well. Whereas I know when yeah. I used to watch football when I was younger, the World Cup, it was more about what they did off field than what they did on field. They were all characters, weren't they, in terms of Gaza, Beckham, they were all yeah, they were kind of the, the breaking wave of celebrity in football. Um mm. and I never thought that. So whereas these guys I knew nothing about. I've really had to sit down and mm. learn their names, <laughs> find out about them because they've got they've got no presence in the sense that they've got no you know, the reputation doesn't precede them, priors, which is, which is nice. Yeah. It's nice. They're there to do a job. They do the job and they get off the field and that's it. Um, mm. And even even when you listen to them post-match, I mean, I'm probably going to get some grief here, but when you listen to some <laughs> footballers post-match, there's not much to say, is there? So when they're talking, you're like, what am I listening to? Yes. Uh, but these guys... Just these guys actually, when they come off field, they're actually worth listening to. When they, when they say something, they've, they've got a good grounding to them, um, and yeah, they feel the questions it's fairly well. Based, right? it? Yeah, they feel the questions fairly well. Right? Some, not so much. You can tell they're primarily paid to kick a ball. Um, <laughs> if you know them. I do. So, I, I, yeah. I, I do indeed. Yeah. But yeah, they. Um, they seem like a nice bunch of guys, and nice things should happen to nice people. That's where I, that's where I stand. Yeah. It's karma, in a weird way. Um, I hope that uh, I don't hope that badly. You know, when I was like twenty, I was really into England and football, and I wanted us to win like more than anything. I think now I've just become more jaded, or other things are probably more important. But I think I think jaded from all the losses. Um, you just you tire of it. It's a bit like painting. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just think yeah. I just think the minute here in the UK, there's a real nice. It feels like an, a real nice spirit of uniformity and people yeah. coming together. So in that sense, it would be nice for England to win it for that reason alone. Um, so that way, that kind of yeah. good vibes, that good karma, 
uh, curl. Because like I said, if these guys end up being the poster poster boys of a generation, I don't think that's the worst thing to happen. You know, mm. I think they've got some, you know, rush what what, what Rushford did in terms of yeah. preschool meals and, and whatnot. I think, you know, the heart's in the right place. So in that sense, I, I actually want them to win so that way they remain in the minds of the people for a bit longer. Because like I said, I think we've had a real vacuum in terms of uh, good moral individuals yeah, who, spotlights. Who, t- who take on a leadership role. So from yeah. that perspective alone, I would like them to do well um, and be rewarded in that sense for the kind of for the way they carry themselves. Not the obviously it should be the best team, but um, <laughs> well, Italy very 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 easily could win. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I uh, I agree. I think it's nicer to see nice people winning rather than just dicks winning, um, yeah. which is always boring. Um, so, wrap it up, shall we? Yeah. So. Um... That's it. Like I said, I'm still feeling a bit under the weather, so I will try to put links uh, in the description down below. But like I said, it's one o'clock in the morning now on the Saturday as we record this. And I'm with the final being at six o'clock tomorrow as well. I'm going to try and put this live um, at 10 in the morning or nine in the morning on Sunday instead, um, because the, when we did change the time, time slot, it seemed to perform better. And leaving it till later in the day because I think a lot of people do a bit of painting at some point during the day on the Sunday so we can catch most people at that point um, which basically means we don't have a very big turnaround in terms of um, this show going live so I will try to put the links there but if they're not forgive me um, and you'll find them on our social media most important thing is you can find them isn't it yeah I think we've given enough information as well that while you're watching, you can type it in the in the Google search engine, and you'll find uh, what we're talking about. But I'll try and put some links in at some point. I agree. Thank you, Lionel. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, our listeners. Um, Yeah, cool. See you in two weeks. Yeah, catch you in two weeks, guys. See you later. Bye, 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 bye.